Oh, great. It recorded all of my pre-screen stretches and yawns. All right, one, give me a second. Uh, there's a 20 second delay, so this is always a little weird for me to navigate. Let me just move some stuff around on my screen and make sure everything's good. And then I will get started. Da, 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 da. Okay, I think that's everything. Yeah, it's happening. Okay. Oh wait, no, I don't wanna see. There are certain things that I have to like actively put off of the screen. Like I, I can't, um, I need to cut off any information about how many people are watching or else that becomes the main focus of my ego. You know, like, what does it mean if, if you know, if I'm counting the number of the stories that, you know, I tell about my worth based on whoever's watching this. So um, just, that's what I, that's what I do. Hello, I'm Willow. Um, I am gonna be relying on the YouTube caption feature to uh, to get the captions for this and I won't be doing any ASL. Sometimes when I teach I sign certain things just to try to be um, make it accessible to folks of all different abilities of hearing um, but I will not be doing that today. Anyway, who am I? I'm Willow. I am so I this is <laughs> this is my last stream for a while. Um, and we're, we're totally gonna get into this meditation and it will be a lot more organized. Um, my brain is slightly less organized in general, so in the beginning you'll just have to bear with me as I try to spit all, out all of this information. But basically, Naked in Motion, maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It's a thing. In the before times, we used to have naked yoga and Pilates classes in New York City, Boston, and Seattle. Um, so pandemic happens, lots of things are lost. Um, uh, more importantly, many lives. Um, but one of the small things that was lost was um, a lot of our business operations. So um, uh, I have I had made an update video about my plan pandemic plans as far as like when we think we're going to be doing in person classes. Um, but then I made an update to that update recently. It is also on our YouTube channel, so you can check a look um, where uh, I basically explain the details about my leave of absence. I'm taking a sabbatical, basically, or whatever you want to call it. I'm basically stepping away entirely um, from the work because, uh, long story short, I got very, very burnt out um, and so need to very uh, intensely refocus on my mental health. Um, or naked emotion definitely won't have a chance of existing in the future. Uh, but anyway, I get more into that in that video. So but before I do that, I did want to do two live stream meditations for free. Just um, these are based on uh, these are a couple of meditations that I put together, but has been very heavily influenced by a lot of other teachers, and that I'll be also like citing as we go through. Um, and they've been really helpful to me. And uh, if they can be helpful to any of you, like. That's awesome because, um, because what else do I care about except helping people? Um, what am I saying? Okay, so there's this big announcement. The major thing that's happening with that is that um, we we have been operating on Patreon for before the pandemic and then also through the pandemic. Um, and it was, it did have a certain like, pricing structure or whatever, but as I'm gone, I've completely changed it so that it's entirely pay what you can. So the minimum is like $5 uh, US dollars, but um, yeah, you can go to our Patreon page. I'll link that in the description along with um, whoever else that I cite in this. Um, and yeah, you can have access to my entire Patreon Naked Yoga library, uh, which has like video tutorials and instructional photos and videos and full-length classes and audio classes, like those, it's like a lot of stuff. Three, over three years of content, probably actually even over four now that I'm thinking of it. Um, anyway, so you can have all of that for five bucks um, because yeah, that's that's uh, that's what I want for everyone to to be helped if you want to be, if, if it is useful to you, then great. Let it be useful. And um, that is that is all I can care about right now is the well-being of human beings and not, not capitalism. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into a whole capitalist crisis, crisis uh, breakdown right now, maybe in a different video. So this is a meditation 
um, I had previously done a few weeks ago. I had to reschedule this one because I got stuck in stuck on the East Coast because of a lot of illnesses and things that had to... Anyway, so um, I did one a few weeks ago that was called the Anti-Rumination Meditation. And um, I'm not going to go into any of those details. Um, we're going to sort of pick up where we left off. You don't need to have seen that video or to have done that practice in order to follow along with this one. Um, I, I do like to think of this as an extension of that, but it also totally stands by itself. So, uh, but if you are curious about the anti-rumination meditation, highly recommend, check it out. It's also on our YouTube channel. Um, so because we're talking about meditation, because we're doing a meditation practice, um, we sort of have to deal with thoughts and feelings. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we just could just not deal with that whenever we didn't want to, but we do. Um, so, and I bring this up because these kinds of meditations, um, you know, will be here for like, um, I'll be here for like the full hour because I've got some introductory stuff and then it's a nice and long, about probably like 45 minute meditation so that we can really get into the details and the layers. And you can always come back to this later if you don't want to watch the whole thing up front. But, um, but yeah, as we're meditating, uh, thoughts and feelings are going to come up and it's impossible really, I think, um, to, to teach a meditation without addressing what to do with those um, because they happen and those things then make people feel like they're not doing it right or they're not good at meditation. Um, so I think of, you know, I mean, one of the simplest definitions of yoga is mind control and this is one of the ways that we uh, work on that. So yeah, we're sort of relearning uh, how to how to relate to all the inner workings of our mind. Um, so, but that being said, this is not a substitute for mental health counseling. Um, this is not therapy. Um, and I, yeah, I, I think it's, I, I really, there's a lot of yoga and meditation out there that, you know, tries to claim certain mental health benefits. And while I find this particularly helpful um, and in line with a lot of the therapy that I have done in the past, um, this is just an option, so if there's anything that doesn't fit well for you or doesn't feel safe or whatever, you know, just, just turn it off, walk away. Um, I really value mental health counseling, um, and I highly recommend that um, folks seek um, the assistance of a licensed mental health professional. Um, I think we all need that. Um, anyway, this is still in development, so uh, this, this this meditation, which is called the pizza pie of awareness. It's gonna get a little weird, and then it's all gonna make sense, like most of the things that I teach. Um, uh, and I'm gonna reference Pima Chodron. <clears throat> um, and this book called Detox Your Thoughts. So later on, in the after I'm done with this, I'm gonna um, link in the description a couple of these things. So Pima Chodron and Detox Your Thoughts, so the, the teacher and the book. Um, so you feel free to look into that more. Just uh, this meditation is about um, taking from Pima Chodron's focus. She talks a lot about uh, the sort of percentage of focus on breath. That's the main thing that I got from her when we're teaching a meditation or when we're doing meditation. She talks a lot about like a little dab of attention, like 20%. I think I might have her, I think I might have read there was like she just kind of arbitrarily wrote like a small percentage and I really ran with that. I was like, oh, 20%. Does that mean there's a whole other amount that I could split up into a pizza pie? And then I did. Um, so, so that's drawing from that. And then on um, the detox your thoughts is about just learning about how thoughts work, how feelings work, sort of how just like it's very accessible. So it's not particularly heady. Um, so yeah. And I, I find it really helpful to re to relearn how to deal with that stuff. Um, this is also coming from a place last, my last little bit of paperwork here, um, is that, <laughs> sorry, I lost my train of thought, is that, okay, so this is also inspired by my struggle with very severe obsession, obsess, oh my god, I forgot what it's called, upset, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, wow, um, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> it's obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, doing a really bad job of remembering that diagnosis. But anyway, the uh, I'm not gonna get into that, and I'm certainly not going to say that this is um, 
my experience with that is, is reminiscent of any people, any other folks who do have this, um, or that this meditation is a cure-all for that. Um, but because of my OCD, this is sort of um, part of my thinking about this stuff based on all of the work that I've done to for treatment for that. Um, this particular, these particular two meditations that I've been teaching actually, um, yeah, have been particularly useful. Um, and, and the reason why I'm very passionate about it is because um, we all know what it's like to get really hyper-focused on something, like a problem or a thought or a feeling, right, where we're like highly zoomed in on it. We all know what that's like. Um, and, you know, folks with OCD, like definitely like myself, the, the thing that makes that more like a disorder is that it's, it affects your life in a different way or more intensely, so it's more disruptive. So I, I'm saying this because I, I know what it's like to super focus, like to hyper focus and, on something, on a problem or a thought, and have that like really, really uh, like, I don't know what to say here, damage. Uh, it really negatively affects my life, um, affects my ability to function um, in the past. So this is uh, what I've been working on. And um, But yeah, you don't need to have OCD to benefit from this. We all have thoughts and feelings, and we all get lost in them sometimes. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, if, you, if any of this feels unsafe for you or doesn't resonate, um, no pressure to continue. I'm not... I am not a wise sage. I am just a human being trying to get through the world. Um. <laughs> so yeah, have a seat. And I'm sitting in a chair. You can sit on the floor. You can lie down on your back, like really whatever. Um, hopefully finding a space that is as comfortable as possible. But uh, that for some folks, you know, especially if you've got like chronic pain or, or um, or injury or something like that. Um, the idea of being comfortable, I've recently come across this idea, which I, it's sort of, a, sort of like a light bulb moment. It's like, sit down and find a comfortable seat. And that's what yoga is, right? It's about, yoga asana is about a comfortable, stable posture. It's like, well, maybe for some people, comfort is just like not an option. So if you feel like she wants me to sit in a comfortable seat, that's gonna be, the whole focus of this entire thing. Yes, I hear you. Um, so sit in like however you want to sit now, however you think would be good to sit now or lay down or whatever. Um, but there's no pressure. I think we get this idea of meditation as this like super still, we have to be like very still and in one spot. And if you have an itch, you can scratch. And you know, there's plenty of thoughts behind that and it's not um, entirely invaluable. I'm just uh, not valuable. I'm just saying that like, be comfortable as best you can now, but know that that's probably gonna change, or it can change anyway. So especially if you are struggling with any pain, like, yeah, adjust your seat. If you need to just start laying down all of a sudden, or if you need to stand up, up a little bit, or if you need to do some movement, you can literally do, like you could probably do your dishes and just listen to this in the background. Um, so yeah, so yeah, no pressure to be still. Um, and it's okay if, it's okay if, Sometimes we're a little physically uncomfortable. It's okay if we're physically uncomfortable because we can actually use that. We're gonna bring that into the pizza pie of awareness. So no worries if you're having some human pain. All right. <clears throat> very long spiel. I have some notes. You'll see me looking down a lot, by the way, because this is a very detailed meditation and I have everything organized and written down. So, as a follow-up to the anti-rumination anti meditation, which again, you don't need to have seen, um, but if you did watch that one, um, you know, we had the example, we had the whatever image that you chose, the one that I was working on, the sort of video clip, the gif of, of, of what it was like to ruminate was um, like walking down the street and then having somebody interrupt you like um, to sign up for something, for example. Um, so, and we brought that into our thoughts. So the idea of just, you know, walking down the street somewhere, walking in a park, and your thoughts come up to you and they're trying to get your attention blabbing away. So we already worked on anti-rumination. So how to like relate to that person that's like, hi, I'm important. You should probably be worrying about this. Um, we worked on anti-rumination, like walking away, not, 
not trying to not see them or make it go away, just walking away. And then say you do that though, and they're still just like following behind, right? And, um, and, and so maybe, you know, even after that meditation, think, well, okay, like I saw them, I didn't avoid them. I didn't avoid my thoughts. And then I, I turned over here and I was like, I'm just gonna casually walk to this tree. And I'm just trying to enjoy my walk to the tree. And this thought is still just like, hey, you forgot to worry about this thing and you forgot to do this thing. And it's just so annoying. And you're trying to be patient. You're trying to be um, non-judgmental, but like, it's just there all the time. And I definitely know what that's like. So sort of a second level to this is to recognize that um, that's okay, part of being human. Um, and also to figure out ways to turn that into a smaller percentage of what you are aware of. So turning your awareness into a bigger picture of all the different things that you are aware of so that this thought that's trailing behind you and shouting in your ear still doesn't have to be, still doesn't have to be like discarded or addressed or run away from um, because their voice will just get quieter if we start to notice all the other stuff. But we're gonna talk about pizza. So, um, so I think I think first we'll just talk about, I think first we'll just do a, a, like a brief warm up. So you'll sit for like, or you know, we'll, we'll meditate for like a couple of minutes, maybe one minute each round. Um, and don't worry so much about the perfection of this math, but we're gonna try as you sit. You know, if you wanna close your eyes, cool, not awesome, whatever, and uh, try to focus 100% of your attention on your breath. So notice how the breath is moving in your body. Maybe you notice like it feels my belly moving or uh, maybe it makes a sound or you just feel the way it moves in your throat. So and again, don't worry, it's probably not gonna be 100%, but just try for this minute. Try to focus 100% of your attention on the breath for as long as you can. If your attention goes away from that, it probably will. That's okay, just come back 100% as best you can. Okay. Okay, and feel free to let that go. Our next step here. So I, I, find that, I find that quite difficult, and I think for a long time in my meditation practice, that's what I thought I was supposed to do, is 100% of my focus has to be on one thing or my breath. And that just felt like a lot to ask of a human being that has all these different senses and perceptions of the world. Um, so now try, we're gonna pick a couple things, 50-50. So we've got the breath, and then pick one other thing. So I've already got, my pipes are making a weird noise over there. Um, and so I kind of already have to notice some of that. So I'm just gonna pick that. Maybe you notice a sound outside. Maybe you notice uh, a physical sensation, a feeling, whatever it is. Um, so try at the same time. It's like you've got your attention and you're dividing it in half, half of it on your breath, half of it on the other thing, trying to notice both at the same time, as best you can. If your attention goes away, just come back to it. Okay, and feel free to let that go. So that one feels a little bit more doable, accurate to me. Um, but even then, I picked my two things and then I'm like, oh shit, the birds though. I can also hear the birds and that wasn't one of the things that I picked, but I also can't help but noticing that or I can't help but see something or whatever. 
Um, so we're just gonna lean into that. Um, and again, this math, if you're like really into math, you know, figure out whatever percentages you want. Um, but like, what's thinking just 20% or 15 or 10 or whatever, pick a small percentage of your attention that will stay with your breath. And then pick other things. And you don't have to pick them ahead of time. You might just sort of start with a little bit of attention on your breath. And then you'll start to notice, oh, I hear this. But then I also see this. And I also feel this. So whatever it is that you notice, let it just sort of all be a smaller amount of awareness that can turn into that 100%. And like it's all happening at the same time. So there's no need to, uh, you don't have to completely ditch your breath in order to hear the birds or to feel the ache in your shoulder. Like it exists at the same time and you can sort of have a little bit of attention on all of it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and we can let that go. Don't worry, plenty more where that came from. So we'll get plenty of opportunities to practice. This is sort of the basic idea of it. I'm gonna use a pizza because it's, you know, it's a circle and then it's divided into, you know, you could use a pie, whatever. Um, a pizza pie, if you will. Um, a combination of slices of pie and pizza, that would be fine. Um, but if, if that starts to feel like weird or you don't quite, I don't know, maybe uh, visualization in that way is difficult, um, then you can still return to this idea of just building things up to eventually the 100% of your attention, but other things require, different things require smaller amounts at the same time. All right, so to the pizza. This is what I have found interesting. Um, we're imagining a world where, and I'm pretty sure this, I'm pretty sure this does happen, but like normally, you know, you would order like, you know, <laughs> not only you order, like I'm trying to think of like, okay, what are my normal pizza ordering habits? Okay, so I'm thinking you're with a group of friends, maybe you order like three pizzas and you get like one of them is a cheese, one of them is half pepperoni, half something, and the other one is all Hawaiian or, or whatever. Um, so sometimes you like divide them up, right? I feel like that's typically the, the real life practice, but we're just gonna imagine in this world that you have a big piece of pizza, just the one, uh, sorry, big circle, uh, pie of pizza, a big a whole thing of pizza. <laughs> and each slice is different, is the thing. Now this actually does happen in real life. Um, so if you're like, that sounds really weird. It's a totally a thing. Like for example, if you go to a pizza place in New York um, and you want a bunch of different slices, they'll just put it in a pizza box for you and you know, they just put the different slices. So it's like, I want three broccoli, two, two uh, sausages and however many of this and let's put it all together. So you end up having, you know, this, this big giant pizza pie of like different toppings. So it's totally a thing and that's what we're gonna work with. Okay. Um, <laughs> so as you're wherever you are, feel free to close your eyes or not. We're now just gonna bring this meditation idea into the pizza visualization. So visualize the whole pizza. Think of the whole pizza and notice, you know, however many slices it's sliced into, maybe eight to start. That could change also. Um, and then sort of zoom in on one slice. All right, so this bottom right corner here is my slice veggies or whatever it is that you like yeah so visualize your slice uh you know notice the stuff that's on your slice this and really we literally are thinking about pizza here but if you know if you don't eat pizza um you know again pie that's also good um, if you don't eat pie then i can't help you because that's just very sad <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so then also, as you notice your piece, Start to then, again, we're still staying zoomed in. We're staying zoomed in, so we're not looking at the whole pizza. We're just one at a time going to each slice and noticing what's on there. And you're literally, you're just making this up. So you go to the next slice and it's like, okay, somebody ordered, because you know, you've got a big group of friends and you all wanted different slices, right? So it looks like some, somebody ordered pineapple. And then you go to the next slice and it looks like someone ordered pepperoni and so forth and just keep going around and noticing really the specifics, focusing on one slice at a time. It's okay if you're laughing or think this is absolutely ridiculous. It is. And life is also ridiculous, so we're leaning in. As you go around to these different slices of pizza, you might also notice your reactions to them. For example, as I'm going around, I notice, okay, here's the anchovy slice. I'm immediately like, ew, who ordered that? That is disgusting. No offense if you like anchovies. Um, I'm, a I'm a vegetarian, so I, I wouldn't eat it anyway, but I also think they're kind of stinky. Um, so yeah, and then as I go around to pepperoni, there's like, there's another slice over here. It's like literally three different kinds of, of meat. And I'm like, ugh, that is so, I really don't like that because again, I'm a vegetarian. So I'm noticing as I'm going around, I have different reactions. Oh, like this slice looks good, or I would totally try that next time. Or like, this would be good if it wasn't, you know, didn't have the sauce on it, that kind of thing. Stay with it. And then continue with our pizza. Now, feel free to start zooming out a little. So we were zoomed into each slice at a time, and now we're zooming out a little so that you can see, visualize the whole pizza, the whole pizza pie. And don't worry about the specifics, you know, which one was that, was that pineapple? Don't worry about that one. Just, just it's generally a picture of different slices and things like that. And so you're seeing the whole thing, generally have some idea that they have different things on them. And you can see your slice. You can see like, oh, there's my veggie. Super excited about you later. Um, and then you also can see all the other slices that you made up. Um, and we also found that maybe some of these toppings you don't like, right? So maybe as I, as I use my anchovies, so like as I zoom out, I'm like, oh, there's my, there's my veggie, but there's also that, that anchovy. Yeah, and they're like, they're like almost touching too. So like that's, ugh, that's especially gross. Um, so, just wanted to throw in the idea, as we're visualizing this whole pizza, um, that you ordered one slice. Maybe if there's only four of you, you ordered two, that kind of thing. But you ordered your slice, and then there's all these other slices around you. Um, and they're just there, and you didn't order those. Like, I did not order those anchovies. Um, but I can tolerate them, because I am having a pizza party, and I can't just start blowing up at my friend, like, what is wrong with you? Why do you like anchovies? Get out of my house. No, that's inappropriate. I'm gonna tolerate it, right? I'm just gonna let the anchovies be there, adjacent to my slice. There's nothing I can do about it. I want this person to um, have their anchovies, or mostly I just, there's nothing I can do about it. I invited them over, that's what they ordered. Okay, and let all that go. Next step. <laughs> if you're still with me, congrats. Um, congrats for following the very intricate chain, trains of thought that are in my brain. So our next step here is um, basically, as we did, did in the other one, so we're sort of talking about the general, um, the technique and then the imagery or whatever we're doing. And then we're like, okay, so then are we really thinking about pizza here? No, we're gonna turn that pizza into something that's more relevant. If there's anything else that's more relevant than pizza, I mean, sometimes there isn't. So if that is the only relevant thing to you right now, I 100% understand. Um, however, we can think of these slices of pizza as just literally anything. So we practice noticing different things, you know, our breath, maybe the seat of the chair or underneath you or the floor you heard the birds, maybe the pipes are clicking. Um, so those things will then just turn into, they'll be represented 
by the different slices of pizza. And you can still see the pizza. And again, as far as what this literally looks like, you know, don't worry so much about that. Feel free to get creative. The point is, is that these slices represent different things. It might even just be a blank circle and you just, you know, you have the blank spots here. Maybe, you, maybe you're totally out of pizza territory and you're just full on circle graph and there's nothing in it. There's just the blank slices here and you just put those into all good. We don't have to actually thinking about pizza here. Okay. So <clears throat> before we get into the main go at it, let's try transitioning our, um, bringing these things together. Okay. As you are, feel free to close your eyes or not. Feel free to change positions, walk around and think about um, something that you can focus easily on intensely. Um, so, and again, no pressure to do this. If you want to focus instead, we can keep this a little bit more, um, a little bit less intense anyway, by focusing instead just on the breath. We're gonna start with the one thing, it's gonna be that 100% of awareness, and then we're gonna fill in this, the, the whole pizza pie here. So if you wanna stay with, okay, 100% goes to the breath, okay, now that starts to be 20%, as there's another 20% goes to the birds, et cetera, et cetera. Feel free to keep it there. Um, but if you wanna try this with some actual thoughts um, that you're having, um, feel free to pick something that you know is super easy to hyper-focus on because it's bothersome. Maybe, um, it's, you know, I think last time I mentioned, that maybe you just you got if you're worried because you got in a fight with somebody, or maybe you're experiencing um, some intense shoulder pain, like something that you're struggling with, a decision you're making, uh, anything where it's like where I'm like, okay, so put 100% of your attention on that, and you're like, easy, done. I've already basically been thinking about that the whole time and not really listening to you. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Um. So yeah, try to keep as much of your attention as you can, 100% of that focus as best you can. And sometimes it feels like when we're thinking about these things or when we're hyper-focused on something, um, sometimes we have this illusion that we can't stop thinking about it. And so my proposal here is like, okay, don't then. We don't have to not think about that thing we're gonna leave it there. We're just gonna to try to contain it into a smaller subsection of our awareness. So we're not gonna get rid of this thing. We're not gonna throw this pizza out, leaving it there. And right now I start to sort of imagine, the first thing I imagine actually for me is the whole, is the whole pie. So I think of, okay, I'm having uh, hip pain or something like that. So that's, that becomes a whole pie. I'm hyper aware, hyper aware of that. Um, so that starts with the hundred percent if you're following my, my math attempts here. And then, um, starting to zoom out a little bit, just like we did. So again, definitely don't stop thinking about that thing. Sometimes it feels like you can't anyway. Great. We're not going to even bother. That's, that's, that's a lot to ask. Don't, don't worry about that. But if we start to notice literally any other thing, like, okay, but also I'm breathing, noticing the breath. Well, if you're noticing your breath, then now we're at 50-50 because you're thinking about this thing, but we're also noticing the breath. And as you start to notice other things, now I hear the birds. Okay, now the pizza is divided into thirds. So as you zoom out, starting to fill in these pizza slices or just general slices of a pie or whatever, of a circle graph, with any other thing. So it might be the sensations, temperature of the room, the things that uh, you're sensing now, like we've mentioned. Um, I typically always have at least one Backstreet Boys song or NSYNC stuck in my head at all times. So that's definitely over here in the corner. So it can be other things that you're sort of, that are, are, are on your mind. Like I also have this like running grocery list. It's like, okay, I know I gotta go to the grocery store. 
maybe you're feeling sad or something and maybe that becomes one of the slices too there's all kinds of things you can notice not just outside of you but also inside of you zooming out letting each thing be a slice of pie However, if that thing that we started with, the thing that you're struggling with, if that's particularly challenging, sometimes it magically takes up the whole pie again. It's like, wait, anchovies everywhere. All of a sudden, we've lost all of our veggies. Um, so that's okay. We're just gonna do it again. It's now back to 100%, cool. But your body is noticing. I know it sometimes feels like we can only think about that one thing that we're struggling with, but, your body is actually, without you maybe being aware of it, your body is sensing all kinds of different things. Um, if you can hear, it's hearing things maybe. Maybe it sees things if you can. Uh, maybe there are smells, physical sensations, pain, temperature, objects that are close to you kind of a thing. There's all kinds of things that are already being perceived by your body. We're just not paying attention to it. So we're back to 100% anchovies here. Great. Leave the anchovies. But what else do you notice? and you totally do, I'd be willing. I'm staking my, my everything that I own on it. I'd be willing to bet that you totally are noticing something else right now. For example, and the reason why I'm willing to bet that is because you're listening to my voice or you're reading my, my words on the, on the scroll thing here. So you're paying attention to that too, right? Now we're back to 50-50. What else do you notice? Literally anything. Zoom out, one at a time, fill in the pieces. And again, sometimes that original thing, you know, it's a pesky one. So sometimes maybe it doesn't go back to the entire pizza, but maybe the anchovies start to like, you know, spread a little bit over to a couple of other slices here. Um, so by, again, we're, we're not making the anchovies go away. We're not even making it smaller. We're not trying, this is important. We're not trying to make the anchovies all fit on one slice. What we are doing is recognizing that our attention is a big circle here and there only is however much attention that we have and it must be divided amongst things. So if it feels like right now it's 100% anchovies again, that's okay. If you notice anything else, which you probably will, just that's just how math works. The anchovies will end up taking up less space because you're also thinking about this thing. Okay, and you're also thinking about this thing. So anchovies are just sort of naturally consolidating over here because you're also noticing all this other stuff. And just stay with that for a couple more minutes. And feel free to let that go. So 
So I'm really curious about how that went for you. Um, although I'm not with you so, but anyway, <laughs> um, the, uh, I just wanted to mention again, reiterate that, that point is super important that we're not trying to make all of the, whatever it is that we're, that's taking up all, all the anchovies. I'm just going to use, keep using anchovies. Sorry y'all. But, um, or if it's like your work problem or, you know, a big decision, we're not trying to push that into one slice. It's just naturally becoming smaller as you notice other things because your attention can only at its most get to 100%. Don't take this math too seriously as either because I think um, as I'm saying this, I'm like, never mind. All right, so never mind. All right, let's move on to the, um, the, the feelings part of things. So now I want to mention feelings because um, sometimes we have this idea that however we're feeling now, this is a very common like fallacy of our brain is we think that however we're feeling now is how we're going to feel like forever. Um, or that however we're feeling now, maybe it's in a, it's a particularly negative feeling that there's such distress that it's like impossible to feel anything else. Um, or impossible to feel anything good. So let's see if we can challenge that assumption. Typically for me, and again, just something to think about, but just from my experience, um, typical for me, the first obstacle in, in experimenting with this is first like deciding to allow myself to experience something positive because sometimes I'm super focused on something, a negative thing or a bad feeling because, um, because I, th I really think that there's something in me that thinks that that's the only thing that I deserve. So for me, um, I had to sort of set up a container where it's like, okay, sure, maybe, but just for this exercise, let's pretend just for this exercise, let's pretend, let's give myself permission. Let's say that, okay, let's say I deserve to also feel joy sometimes. We can talk about that later, but just for this exercise, <laughs> I'm talking to my anxiety. It's like, I know, I know you really just want me to worry about things all the time, but like just now I'm going to give myself permission to also feel other things if I want. So starting again with meditation, you might stick with the, just the physical sensations like we started with, or again, you might go back to that something tough, whatever it is that is a challenge for you. And so maybe you're noticing that taking up the whole pie already, um, or you might already sort of be getting the hang of this. And maybe right now it's already only taking up like a smaller percentage. That's okay too. Um, but more of your attention right now on that thing, notice feelings, sensations, thoughts that then come up as you then zoom out, those things naturally take up parts of the pie of awareness. So same steps. Notice things outside of you that you hear, that you see, feel, or things inside of you that you feel, emotions, other thoughts, anything like that. Same thing that we just did. What else do you notice? Yes, there is this tough thing, but what else do you notice? Because you totally do notice other things. And just to reiterate, we've got that really icky, challenging, not so great thing. It's still there. Don't worry. We have not gotten rid of it. Those anchovies are still probably taking up their space. We are not even going to try to get rid of it. It's almost like, it's almost like I'm saying we're welcoming the anchovies. Dare I say that we can even say, no, I want you to have your slice of anchovies. You can be there. I want this to be here. I welcome you. Okay. So we've got this whole slice and now thinking about all the other different stuff that you notice as you zoom out, you notice the other pie slices. Um, are there any other feelings that come up that are related to any of those? For example, over here, I've got my slice of noticing the, like, you know, this, this very particular bird that is, I don't know if you can hear it, but very loudly chirping at me. Um, and 
it reminds me, I know, there's a specific kind of very cute little tiny bird that, that I know that that is because they always go here to this tree. And when I think about it, I start to feel like kind of, I don't know, like, oh, cute. It's like this cute teeny tiny little bird, right? But don't worry. I still have my anchovies. Like, my problems are still there. But in this other arena, like, I'm also like, well, <laughs> there's this adorable little bird. Maybe one of the slices is the sensation of the couch underneath you. And maybe that reminds you that later on you've got movie night with your friends. And so, dare I say that you might feel excited? Is there any excitement there or looking forward to that? And again, no pressure if not. So I'm definitely not saying that you must be also feeling other positive things. I'm inviting you to explore. Now that we've figured out what else we're aware of, what other feelings are there? Because it's possible that maybe we can feel different things, that we're capable of a lot of different other things. So is there also joy in there about something? Yes, we've got our issues. If you're having a hard time though, coming up with, if you're having a time, hard time noticing anything that's naturally already in there that's positive, associated with your birds or your movie night or whatever it is. Um, feel free to also intentionally just pick a slice and fill it in with something that you know brings you joy, just for the sake of this exercise, um, or in life, I guess. But so, yeah, you're going around to your slices of pizza and you're like, yeah, all of these, all of these slices just still make me feel all different kinds of bad. So cool, leave them there, leave them on that slice. Just pick one slice you might even have to add an extra slice here. So maybe the other slices become smaller percentages, but you add this extra slice here and, and intentionally fill it with like the face of somebody that you love um, or the face of somebody that just generally inspires positive feelings or, or calm feelings or anything. We're not trying to make ourselves feel positive. We're only just filling one slice of our awareness. We're just thinking about somebody that we love or a movie that we really like or a food, a dessert that we really love. We're just putting it there and seeing, okay then, what happens now? Are there any other feelings that show up? And just stay with that for a while. Stay with this a little bit longer. I just wanna again point out that maybe you still have that original slice of anchovies there. Maybe though you've already started to think about so many other things that maybe you're like, oh shit, I forgot about the anchovies. That's okay. But now that I'm reminding you, now you're like, oh well, okay, well now there's like this little sliver or okay, now the sliver is getting bigger now of the, the anchovies, cool. Just wanted to point out that's still there. Uh, if it's not, if it wasn't naturally now, then probably other times in your life when I'm not guiding you through meditation, it maybe will be there. Um, so if you were able to find any other feeling, any joy, excitement, calm, any other thing, just like we can notice our breath and the birds at the same time, we can notice both of these things at the same time. They still exist, they're just on different slices. They exist, they're together. Because we have zoomed out.
and feel free to let that go. <sighs> I really wish we were in a class together so I could like ask how that went. Um, so that's our last like meditation exercise. I just wanted to finish up here, follow up with some like last minute thoughts to tie everything together to hopefully make it all make sense, hopefully. Um, so yeah, the hopefully the lesson here that is, uh, is that it's possible to have these unpleasant, unwanted thoughts or feelings, problems that we're worrying about, whatever, that we can let them exist and not try to get rid of them and also, at the same time, experience other things. Maybe that even feel entirely opposite of that. Because again, we're already experiencing other things, we're just not always paying attention to that. We're always breathing, right? So if you think, all I can think about is this one problem, maybe that's true, but you technically are still breathing. So if you start to notice that more, then that also has, there's also has to make space in the pie for that. And if you ever doubt, um, like if, if you did, if you felt like you had success with this, like, oh, that's so weird. I, um, this happened to me the other day. I was, uh, I was stuck on the East Coast dealing with a lot of illness with friends and family and travels drama, major travel drama. And it was just like a really bad time and I was just drowning in anchovies. And, um, and then I, okay, then I did that thing. I'm like, okay, what else do I notice? Blah, blah, blah. And somewhere in there, the thought of a roller coaster came up and then that brought me so much excitement. And I was like, oh wait, there's a theme park near here. I really want to go. So I can just like scream for three hours in a very appropriate social way. Um, so yeah, if, if you do feel like you've had any success in that, um, then just make a note. Make, maybe you did do that just now. So that in the future, if you feel like, oh, that's not possible, like I can only feel this bad thing. Well, maybe you did it today. So we've already proven that you can, right? Um, the other big question that I wanted to ask is, when you opened up the Zoom, whenever you zoomed out and saw the whole pie of the different things, um, did that mean that either your original struggle went away um, probably not. Or if it did, so like I said, sometimes you just, you actually do. The, the pie starts to fill with other things and it gets smaller, but maybe it comes back kind of a thing. Um, the other big question is like, did you get to have every thought that you wanted to have in your brain? So basically, were all the slices of pizza like great choices? Were all of the different slices everything that you loved? Like, yeah, okay, maybe there's this like one little anchovy here, but also like every other thing is pineapple and vegetables or whatever. For me, that's not true. Um, so again, we're working with the reality of what we can and can't control. Um, so this especially comes up with, um, Sorry, let me finish the train of thought first. So yeah, there's, there's no need to make those go away or try to force yourself to feel anything different because you can't. Um, it's more just opening yourself up to the possibility that there already may be something else there, you're just not noticing it. Um, so this practical application, like I said, uh, I guess I already, already gave the example, but if I'm going about my day, I notice that I'm really in it with anchovies, having a really big feeling, anxious, can't stop thinking about something or whatever, I stop. Sometimes I do the, the, the anti-rumination meditation first, or sometimes I go straight to this, and it's like, okay, I see you anchovies, you're the whole pie. And then the big question is, what else do I notice? What else do I notice? Okay. I am noticing, sometimes I even say it out loud, I'm noticing the chair underneath my body. And there was, you know, and then I, I'm noticing this, and I'm noticing uh, this other thing. And so it starts to fill up. What else do I feel? And that's been very helpful for me. Um, but a major part, the last major thought that I have about this is um, why I think this can be helpful. Um, so to sort of bring it all back to like, okay, what does this have to do with naked yoga or like what you even do? So um, a major thing that people um, come to me seeking for uh, help about 
um, people come to me with uh, a desire for naked yoga practice to make them get rid of all body shaming thoughts, right? That's a very common thing. So if we, uh, they want to, they want to stop, they want to stop having those body shaming thoughts. They want to, um, they want to feel just more body positive. They're just being hounded by these terrible thoughts about their body, and they think naked yoga is going to make that go away. Um, so I, I think I mentioned this this last time here. So oftentimes what I'm actually saying is like, oh yeah, no, we're not going to make that go away. And this is what I'm talking about here because there's not a lot we can do about it because I'm going back to this concept of like, you didn't order that. So again, going back to the original problem here, you're at a pizza party. You did not order those anchovies. But again, like there's nothing you can do. They have to be there and you can tolerate it. So trying to force ourselves to feel another thing like, oh, I don't like that I'm having these thoughts, for example, that I don't like my body, right? Like, I don't want to have that thought. I want to instead have the thought, this is very broad, I want to instead have the thought, my body is beautiful, right? Um, but you can't force that thought into the pie. Because instead there's this, there's this other thought that's already in the pie and trying to make that go away probably isn't going to be successful based on everything that I know about thoughts and things. Um, so, and it can be even more frustrating. It's like, no, get this one away. But again, leave the anchovies there. We're not trying to make it smaller. It's naturally becoming smaller, but we can't kick them off to the side and replace them with something else. And the thing that's helpful about that is to recognize that you didn't order the anchovies. There's all of this crap in our brains, all of these negative ideas about ourselves, our worth, our body, money, um, what we should and shouldn't do, how we should and shouldn't feel. There's all kinds of things um, that are implanted into our brain, basically. Um, uh, as we've, you know, by, based on the way that we grew up in our particular environment, or based on our peers, or also just the world that we live in, there's so many external factors and things that are out of your control um, you can think of it like, so uh, Emily Nagoski has this book called Come As You Are and she talks about the idea of a garden, right? And so it's a similar idea where there's this garden and you were just given this garden, um, but there were already some weeds in there, right? And, and then even then as you go, like sometimes, you know, other, I don't know how flowers work, but the other bad plants get stuck in there. The point is that you inherit this garden. And there's not a lot that you can do about the fact that there's this really pesky few weeds over here. You can plant other plants, um, but that weed was there. So I think it's helpful for me anyway to separate. It's like, okay, yes, this icky thing is here of like, uh, I'm having body shaming thoughts and I don't want to. Okay, but I didn't order that. I can separate it from myself just because I'm having that thought doesn't mean that that's in line with my values. It doesn't mean that I like that thought. It doesn't mean that I agree with that thought. It doesn't mean that there's nothing inherently anything about that. It's just that you're, just that you're having a thought that you didn't order. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope, uh, I hope that this is helpful. Closing up here, um, oh, sorry, the thing I was gonna say about that is that it's not your fault. Yes, that's the major thing, is that um, I think sometimes, for example, in this example, body shame can be compounded by then the, the meta shame on top of this. Like, I'm having this thought of like, oh, I don't like my body, and then, ugh, what a garbage person I am that I'm even having that thought in the first place, right? So then there's this fault, like I'm having this bad thought and it's my fault that I'm even having it in the first place. But that's why I think it's helpful to remember that no, you didn't order the anchovies. You didn't plant those weeds, they are just there. And sometimes you can't do anything about it. Um, and as a matter of fact, trying to make them go away tends to make, th make it worse. So it's not your fault that somebody else ordered anchovies. I mean, I know it's gross. No offense, but it's not your fault. I hope that this is helpful to just 
help, I hope that both of these meditations have been helpful to learn different ways to um, engage with your inner workings. Um, it's not really about changing any of them, it's just about learning to relate to them differently. And um, that we can stop struggling with them, with struggling with thoughts and feelings, and instead just figuring out a different game to play with them. This feels like a very big moment because this is the last public offering that I'm going to be having until at least the be at least the end of August. So that's where I'm at, and we're right on time. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you want to uh, practice along with any of my other naked yoga teachings, you can for five bucks. It's all on there. I'll include some more links in the description below. And yeah, I hope you have a good day. <laughs> Bye.